This tutorial looks at the use of MATLAB for iterative PI design. Now again, students are reminded that we assume they're familiar with the earlier videos in this series on heuristic design. And the purpose of this video is to give you some questions you can use to test yourself. So what you should do is read the questions and try some of them by yourselves before you look at the solutions provided. By the way, we're using some particular MATLAB files here, and if you really want those, um, then you can contact the author. Just a bit of background, we're going to assume that we start from a PI design that's based on the heuristic guidance, which you'll see is 1 over G of 0 times 1 plus 1 over ST, where T is normally taken to be the open loop time constant. First question then. You're given that the model for a tank level system with um, H representing depth and F representing flow is given here. And what we want you to do is design a PI compensator to control the depth. Now we're assuming that it will be PI, not just proportional, because otherwise we know you'll get a steady state offset. And what we'd like you to do is use MATLAB tools in order to do this. Now we've already got some MATLAB tools, but you will need to generate your own. So I'm going to move to the solution now. Um, so now is a good time to pause while you try this by yourself. First then, we'll remind ourselves what the heuristic design is. You'll see here's the formula that you were given. And if I plug in the numbers for this particular system, then you'll see that the PI compensator comes out like this, S plus 0.02 over S. If I put that into the um, system and do the analysis. I've done it here quickly because this video is focused on MATLAB. You'll notice the closed loop transfer function comes out like this, 0 0.02 over S plus 0 0.02. Anyway, most important thing here is let's go to MATLAB and explore this and some alternatives to see if we can tune up the PI to get what we really want. Now, the thing we really need is to note that the KP is one and the KI is 0.02. OK, so we've got this particular GUI to represent this because that's an effective way of using MATLAB. So you'll notice we said the proportional gain should be 1, the integral gain should be 0 0.02. So what I'm going to do now is run this simulation and see how does it perform. So there we go. You can see the tank filling up. You see it following the uh, dynamic that we expected. Uh, time constant was 50, so it hasn't quite got there after 200 seconds. So here's the question. Are you happy with this particular PI compensator? And you might be looking at that and saying, well, it's relatively slow. Perhaps I could increase the flow rate a bit more in transients to get it to fill faster. So let's try increasing the proportional. Here, I've made it 1.5, but I've not changed the integral gain. So what happens? Let's run the simulation again. Now, is that any better? Well, it's ironic here, it's actually further from the steady state, which might be somewhat surprising, um, even though the initial flow rate was a bit faster. So perhaps we should try increasing the integral a bit. So, or not too much. So there we are. I've increased the integral. Um, what did we have um, before? We had 0 0.02. That's quite a lot more. But anyway, let's see what happens. And now you can see that was quite oscillatory, wasn't it? That was maybe going a bit too far. It, um, you can see there's a big overshoot on the output and a lot of overshoot on the flow rate. So maybe I should put in a number here, do it by hand, something like 0 0.05. And let's try that. Again, you can see, oh, I didn't mean 0 0.5, I meant 0 0.05. No wonder. You, could, you can see that went miles over, didn't it? Perhaps that's what you expected. And that one's looking a little bit better. You can see it's settling much, much faster after about 100 seconds, whereas the previous one was close to 200. And the overflow in terms of the flow rate is not very big. Now, the key thing here is to show that with a very simple MATLAB tool, you can experiment with your proportional gain and your integral gain and quickly get the behavior that you want. But it helps to have the heuristic design because that gives you a start point. And you'll see that where we've ended up here is not a long way away from where we started. 
Second example then. So this one represents a domestic heating system. And again, you'll see we've given you a model to represent the domestic heating system with T, the temperature, and W, the power input. So here's a typical sort of answer. Now my heuristic design, again, I've shown you I'm using the formula 1 over G of 0 into 1 plus 1 over ST. If I extract those numbers from this model up here, then my compensator is going to be this, 1000 S plus 0.25 over S. So a KP of 1000 and an integral of 0.25. If I put that into the system and calculate the closed loop transfer function, you'll end up with something like this, 1 over 4000 s plus 1, so a time constant of 4000 seconds, which is about an hour. Let's go to MATLAB then and enter this heuristic design and then see whether we can play around and get something a little bit better. So again, you'll see we've set ourselves up a an easy MATLAB GUI, which has got a slider for the proportional gain and a slider for the integral gain, so we can quickly change these and see what impact it has. So you'll notice the house parameters are actually over here for this GUI. I've got 4, 000, 4 million sorry, there and 1,000 there, so I can change those in a bit. Let's run the simulation. Um, and in fact, I've gone and put the wrong values in there. What we said for the heuristic was we should have 1,000 for the proportional gain and 0.25 for the integral gain. So let's run that again. And what do you notice? Exactly as we expected, we've got behavior that looks very much like a first order response. The input's very much like a step. And the time constant is roughly an hour, as expected. So the heuristic has given us the sort of response we expected. Now, you might argue that it was your house and it's taking three to four hours to get close to the desired temperature, perhaps this isn't good enough. So what are we going to try? Maybe if we integrate up a bit faster. So there I've trebled the integral gain. What happens now? Now, are you happy with that? You'll see by trebling the integral gain, you'll see the heating power in transients went quite a lot hotter or, you know, a lot more power than you might need in steady state. And of course, that's what you need if you want to heat things up more quickly. What happened with the output temperature? You've got a slight overshoot. Would you be happy with that or would you not? I could try increasing the proportional gain just a bit, see if this helps. So let's go up to 1200 and let's run this again. Has that reduced the overshoot slightly? Um, maybe maybe not. But again, you can see very easily I can tweak these parameters to get what I want. So I'll just tweak this one just again. So instead of 0.75, let's try 0.65 for the integral gain and run the simulation. And you see the overshoot is reducing slightly, but the speed is still reasonable. Now, the other thing I can do with these simple MATLAB GUIs is I can say what happens if the heat loss coefficient is less. So now I'm not losing as much heat. So I've changed my model. Is this PI compensator robust? And you'll see, unsurprisingly in this case, the overshoot's much bigger because now the gain of the PI is too big because the heat loss coefficient is smaller. Final example then. Cruise control. So we've got a model of a car um, which is moving the velocity v on a particular slope. Um, you've got a signal f, which is the percentage of throttle, so it goes 0 to 100 percent. You've got a mass m, a friction coefficient b, and a maximum engine force given by k. And you'll see we've given you here a representative model for how this car will go. And what we want you to do is again use MATLAB to investigate a PI compensator for keeping the velocity at the desired speed. And we're suggesting in the first instance, start with a mass of 600 and a maximum engine force of 12,000 and see what sort of PI compensator you'll come up with. Just as a warning down below, if you need to convert miles per hour to meters per second, you need to do a calculation a bit like this. So first, let's put in our heuristic design. So that's what we've done here. We've said heuristic design is given by 1 over g is 0 times 1 plus 1 over st. And for the transfer function we've got here, it comes out like this. Or in the form that we want, you see kp 
is 0 0.025 and Ki is 0 0.0125. If we put that into the closed loop, you'll end up with a closed loop transfer function, something like 2 over s plus 2, um, which is pretty fast response, in fact. So let's go to MATLAB and explore this. Wrong one. There it is. So you'll notice I've put in my proportional gain, 0 0.025. I've put in my integral gain, 0 0.0125. I've set the road slope to be 0 for now. I've set the car mass to be 600. Target speed, 20 uh, miles per hour. And the engine, I've set at 12. And there's a thousand simplicities in that. So let's start this simulation. And I'll stop it there as well. Are you happy? Has that done what you expected? You remember we expected a time constant of around 2. And what do you notice looking at the bottom right hand plot? The time constant is indeed around 2. Would you like this car to accelerate a little bit faster? How would you get it to accelerate faster? Well, there's different things you could do. You, you could increase this proportional. So let's increase that to 0 0.04. OK. Um, well, and then we also need to change the target speed. So we've got some movement. And let's see what happens. We've updated the parameters. And let's continue. And you can see now it's responded just a little bit faster. OK. Still without overshoot. Now I can change these things as I go. For example, let's be silly with the integral, make it far too big. Let's update parameters. Now nothing will happen at first, but when I change the target speed, now you'll see what happens. It's beginning to oscillate a bit because the integral was a bit too big. I could make the proportional much bigger. Update parameters. See what happens. And you'll see the throttle now is very aggressive. Um, I don't know if you saw that. Perhaps if I um, pause it next time, I'll update parameters. And then look at the throttle. Can you see, in fact, the throttle saturated and it was going to go far, far too big. So you see the parameters here are not good. Now, the advantage of using MATLAB is I can also start investigating very, very easily some simple things like, for example, what happens if the car starts going up a hill? So I'm going to put it on a hill. And what do you expect to happen when you go on a hill? You need more throttle to go uphill. Will this PI compensator deal with it? So here we go. And you notice, yes, it does increase the throttle. And it got speed back to where it should be. What happens if I start going downhill? What do you expect the throttle to do? Well, the throttle should now come off because you're going downhill. And there again, you saw the throttle. Can you see on the left the throttle? It's come down to the speed. So this PI compensator is indeed doing what we want. But the key message here is it's very, very easy in MATLAB to explore your PI compensator, to check it delivers what you want. And the other message was starting from the heuristic, put us in the right ballpark so that we only had to do fine tuning thereafter. So in conclusions, we presented some tutorial questions and some work solutions on using the heuristic PER design as a start point and then doing some fine tuning using MATLAB tools. And I guess this is an encouragement to develop some MATLAB tools for yourself so that you can do this.